The collection of holes here at the Country Club is wonderful. There are holes where the players are going to have wedges in their hand. There are going to be holes where the players are going to be having maybe as, as much as a six iron, five iron to execute a shot. So the variety of holes, they move left, they move right. It's just really wonderful the way that the golf course sets in that regard. Jeffrey, great to see you. Good morning. Good to see you, Brennan. Uh, we're uh, nearly on the eve, and uh, why don't we take a little tour through, uh, through your wonderful golf course here. Fantastic. Hole number one starts right there in the middle of the racetrack. It's going to be really fun to see. Strong dog leg left, 490 yards to get them started. Have to put the ball in the fairway. You have an opportunity to roll that ball up under the green. It's well bunkered, and that green has that infinity look in the back. And if we have a back hole location, it'd be interesting to see if they challenge that back hole location. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's a good start. Uh, you're going to have to drive the golf ball in the fairway, uh, but if you don't, the the openness in the front of the green will will give you a chance to to uh, still rally and, uh, and and make a par, maybe maybe better. I anticipate the players they do miss the fairway. They'll play to the first part of the green and just try to go ahead and chip up and get it up and down. But yeah. A strong start will wake them up. Right out of the box. <laughs> That's for sure. And then you come to two, and that I think will have their complete and undivided attention. Yeah, this I uh, think is going to be the most challenging of the threes that we have for open week. And, you know, it's, you got to play to that first part of the green. And back in uh, at Wingfoot, Billy Casper won the open, and he played to the front of the green all four days. And I think it's going to be a great strategy here, be able to chip it up there and make three and walk away with 12 for the week. They'll be pretty darn happy. New tee added a little bit of length, uh, but it'd probably be a mid-ish iron, six iron, depending on the wind, a little bit uphill, uh, well bunkered. It's a you know, pretty small target for, yes. for the, the club they're playing, but uh, this is the U.S. Open. You These stand are the up, best players in the world. Stand up and hit a golf shot. You got it. And then we get to the, the third hole, which is really the first look, that, that unique look here at the country club, where you stand on a tee and, okay, where am I supposed to go? Because you know, they had to fit the, the hole into the ground that the good Lord put here. And they did a wonderful job with that. But it's, it's a little bit disconcerting when you stand on that tee for the first time. But I can remember Paul Azinger saying several years ago, a blind shot is only blind once, the first time you play it. These guys are awful good and their caddies, they'll get the right information to, to dial in there. But they gotta fit that into that little, that small little area on the, in the drive zone. You got the modern game versus old school architecture. And this is where you first see it in hole number three my favorite hole in the property and see the rock outcroppings for the first time and you hit down into that green which is a downhill shot again very firm there watching those balls run through the green and those little delicate shots they're going to have and then you have our skating pond behind it's a great view really anxious to see no how they play this, this hole week. you've got no skating this week but and i love too you know the great work that gill and team did here the putting green restoration there to kind of get those angles out in the shape of that original yeah. green it's, it's really unique, and I, and I think especially from an aerial view, will look, uh, will look quite good. So Jeff, we get to hole number four, another beast, 495 yard, dog leg to the right, fairway slopes from right to left, get up to the green complex, probably our most severe green on the property from right to left. Very important they drive the ball in the fairway here and be able to manage that second shot. The most generous fairway on the golf course, uh, so there'll be ample room to do so, and it's, it is a blind tee shot as you, as you make mention of. Uh, but yeah, they've, they've got to manage the golf ball under that green to be in the right place. You know, I think the players need to think about aim a little left of the hole. Even if they hit in that bunker on the left-hand side, that's a better play than it is to be pitching up from above the right-hand side of that green. No doubt. It. They'll, uh, they'll welcome the opportunity to score four and get to the fifth tee. Speaking of the fifth tee, how exciting is that going to be? 310-yard <laughs> par four up the hill, our first drivable par four, and to see how these Long players try to navigate this hole. It's going to be fun to watch. The green goes away from me in the back. And are we going to see that aggressive player hit it through? And you got about four paces behind that green. You get into those native grasses. It's not going to be an easy up and in. It will be fascinating to see how the modern player attacks this hole. Uh, you know, having a conversation with Curtis Strange a month or so ago about how he played the golf course. And it was you know, some iron off the tee and a nine iron. Well, that's just, I don't think, going to happen. Uh, next week with the U.S. Open. So we'll see how they do, but uh, there's an opportunity to, to potentially make a two, and there's also an opportunity to, to make five or six if, they, if they're not accurate enough with that tee shot. So it'll be fun hole, I think, for the fans to uh, keep an eye on. That's why they call it risk-reward. That's right. And then we get to six, 
Great par three. This hole played the most difficult in relation to par in 1988. It's the only green complex that goes away from us. And the hole locations here are gonna be very challenging for the players. This is another one of those holes, first, third, all day long. You do not wanna to play to the center of this green. Love the variety that's available on this particular hole. Uh, there's not a lot of alternate tee options really at the country club, but this is one where, where we could uh, utilize maybe a little more forward tee with a hole location that's a little bit harder to get to. We'll have to wait and see what the weather provides us and how firm or how soft it is, but I love the fact that this green is kind of atypical. It, it, it runs from the front to the back, and it's just a little something different for the player to contemplate. So next three holes there in the, in the round, some opportunities to uh, potentially make a, a score and then some places to stub your toe. Be interesting to see how this stacks up against hole number two in relation to par. Yeah, absolutely. So Jeff, now we get to hole number seven. I've kind of been curious that the players have tried to drive this screen. 375 to the middle, probably 360 to the front edge. You get these long players, fairways get firm. Will they have an opportunity to run something up there? But that fairway slopes really hard from right to left, so it's going to be challenging for them. Again, it'd be fascinating to see how they take it on because the layup's no gimme. Uh, they have to hit a quality golf shot to get it into a, a, a drive zone that's fairly tight and, and is maybe one of the more pitched drive zones that we have. A lot of undulation, a lot of movement in the ground there. Absolutely, and the green uh, transformation there with Gil and Jim and what they've been able to do there gives us a few more opportunities for hole locations, which will be fun to watch. But it's a short hole. They have an opportunity to put a scoring club in their hands and, and make a birdie. So it'll be fascinating to see what approach they, uh, they take there. And, and really, the prelude to another great scoring opportunity going to eight. Par five that every player in this field will be able to reach with a good tee shot into the fairway. Significant incline up to the green where that ball that just gets to the top, gravity could win and bring it back to the bottom, but it's a short hole. Certainly a real good birdie opportunity. But again, another one of those holes where you could be thinking four and right in six. It's all about your distance control in that second shot or third shot, depending on what they're doing there, to be able to get to that. On the left-hand side, you got a, it's a little shorter that false front is, but it goes about two yards up as you carry into the right-hand side of that green. And we've seen plenty of balls come back down that hill over the years. So. Yeah, there'll be a few divots at the base of the hill. That's really going to test their patience in that hole. Absolutely. And then we go to nine. Again, an, a hole that's not particularly long, but is very strategic. One of the more strategic tee shots on the property. Incredible piece of landscape there. There's a big rock that sits in the middle of that fairway. That fairway was grown over and you have to stay back and that ball just clears that. There's a really good chance with that slope going down towards the penalty area, going into the water, that they, they could be hitting three from down at the bottom of the hill. Yeah, they've got to really think through that. Again, it just, part of the U.S. Open is not just, it's just not about physically standing there and hitting a shot from 158 yards. These, all these guys can do that. They can do it with three different clubs. They can probably play a shot and carry it 158 yards. But here's where you've got to think about the approach and be patient. And maybe you've just made a bogey at the eighth hole, but what is the best way to play the ninth hole, because if I'm gonna get it back at the ninth hole, that could be problematic. You know, it's what makes us a little different from some of the other US Open venues. You know, they gotta think here, it's not just pulling driver out in every hole. And could they hit driver here? Somebody's gonna go ahead and try to take it over the water down there, but if they miss a little right or a little left, they're making five for sure. Yeah, it's gonna be, uh, gonna be quite challenging. All right, so we go to uh, the back nine, which obviously the 10th hole will be the, a starting hole for players on uh, Thursday and Friday. Everybody will start there once. A par five in 1988, be a par four this go around and just a wonderful hole again another example of fitting the hole into the topography that was here green sits up on a shelf surrounded by rough so there's no approach precision will be a requirement with that second shot so that really means you got to get it in the fairway off the tee this green's severely sloped from left to right so favoring the right hand side on that second shot even if you're pitching out of the long grass uh, you know, for your third is not going to be a bad play up that hill keep you on the offensive side of the hole it'll be a a tough starting hole Absolutely. Uh, for everybody, but everybody will do it just uh, do it just once, and then it'll be right there in the middle around waiting waiting for you. Uh, and then we go to God, we're so excited about my this. favorite hole on the property. First time back since 1913, they played the U.S. Open that we met one as the tenth hole back then, and to bring it back in is so exciting. I know you've been very instrumental in this, Jeff. So why don't you tell us about the hole? Well, listen, Gil, Gil did all the work. He and Jim did all the work in getting it back to the way it was and getting that putting green complex back to the way it was. But I'm just excited for the opportunity 
for there to be a 130 yard par three. Everybody watching, everybody that's here as a fan watching on TV, everybody that plays golf can try to play that hole, including the best players in the world. And I think it's gonna be really fun for the average golfer to watch the best players in the world play that particular hole. You know, you stand up on a 250 yard par three, not everybody in the world can play that hole. This is one everybody can play. It's gonna be fun to watch. Spin control is gonna be a must on this green complex. We'll, uh, we'll see how it shakes out. Hopefully Mother Nature gives us some firm conditions. Now we head to hole number 12, which is a 475, 480 yard par four, blind tee shot. Uh, the players aren't gonna see the ball land. Downhill second shot to a very severe green from back to front. Again, distance control is gonna be a key favoring the first third here, Jeff. I'm not sure what your thoughts are. I think it's a pretty straightforward hole, but a demanding hole. Again, there's just not a hole here at the Country Club and just generally speaking at the US Open, you can't take a shot off. And uh, I think there's ample room to drive the golf ball. Fairway bunkers waiting for a shot that wanders to the right. It's a very small target to play your second shot. And again, one that's surrounded by rough and bunkers and, and, and things that are not pleasant, but uh, a, a really good golf hole. So Jeff, 13th hole, gonna need some strategy here. Kind of like playing number nine. What are they gonna do off the tee here? Dog leg to the left, got to carry it over water on their second shot. The green slopes severely from back to front, a little bit from left to right. Going to be critical they drive the ball in the fairway here. Yeah, exactly, because this is one where they've got to have distance control. They, they need to be in control of their golf ball. This is a great example where we will have graduated rough. So they'll have a strip of three inch rough where, listen, the best players in the world can play shots out of three inches of rough, but they won't have control of their golf ball. So will they be tempted to take on the putting green, even if they do miss the fairway. Well, we'll have to wait and see, but it's, you know, it's an interesting hole. It's the first combination of the first and second holes on the Primrose course that make up what will be the 13th hole. Excited to see how they'll play this hole. First time we play that hole is 1957 amateur. So really fun to see it still in the rotation. Absolutely. And then we go to 14 and 14 has been really transformed for this particular open over 88. It was a par four in 1988 at about 450 yards. We'll be playing this hole as a 619 yard par five. Uh, I know the theme has been consistent, but you better drive the golf ball in the fairway here because that second shot is up to that plateau. You know it better than anyone. Yeah, if they don't drive it in the fairway and they have to hit below, they're gonna have a third shot that's blind about 150 yards up the hill. They need to know their sight lines here. It's 525 yards to get to the top of the hill. We introduced this hole in the 2013 amateur, and only two players hit the green in two. It'll be interesting to see how they're able to navigate. And there'll be some fours here, but I think they're gonna be a fair amount of sixes as well. Yeah, it, you just can't get out of position on this hole. And if you do, you will pay the price because as you say, that third shot will be, uh, will be blind from the bottom of the hill. So all of a sudden, a great scoring opportunity becomes where you're, you're playing a little bit of defense and trying to get five and get to the 15th tee. Coming down the stretch, last day, back nine, Sunday of the U.S. Open. It's going to be fun to watch, see how they take advantage of this. And 15, uh, the, the, the walk from 14 green to 15 tee, just a magnificent view from up on top of the hill there. You can see the green, but you absolutely cannot see the, the fairway and the drive zone where the ball is going to land. Um, I think a hole that they'll hammer drivers uh, there's, it's, it's not a particularly narrow fairway for a U.S. Open. There's room out there, but uh, it's a really pretty spectacular shot from that tee. And they have an opportunity to run the ball up here. So if they're in between clubs, again, first third, you do not want to be long here. That green's a little sneaky on the back right. It falls off pretty quickly. So middle of the green here, first third middle is a really good spot to play from. Yeah, good, good par four to, uh, to get us into the closing, the closing stretch. You got it. Now we come to hole number 16. Put a new tee box in. We've lengthened it to 190 yards to 200. Gil did a great job. Really fun green complex here. Slopes from left to right, a little bit back to front. You don't want to take on that whole location behind that bunker. You get a little bit of a downslope that hits. It could run off to the back of the green. You have a little bit of an infinity look now. So middle of the green, a little left-hand side of the green. Let that thing funnel on down. Well bunkered here. Really challenging bunker shots. There's two right-hand bunkers that are very challenging for the players. It's a tiny target, and I think it's made to feel even smaller, a little claustrophobic with the way the trees work around. You're playing back into this copse of trees, and, and it just feels, I mean, there's plenty of room, but it just feels a little tighter, and I think it, it, it accentuates 
the size of that putting green. I, I'm looking forward to, uh, to watching that hole and the guys are gonna have to just stand there and hit, hit a golf shot. Now we come to the most famous hole on the property, hole number 17. <laughs> All started back in 1913. We met Makes Birdie on the 71st hole as an opportunity to make another birdie in the playoff. But so many great things have happened on this hole. It's only 375 yards. Will the modern player try to drive this green? It'd be interesting to see they try to carry it into the front, right, uh, front left bunker and give a bunker shot there. But that's no picnic either, depending on where the hole location is. So. Will they lay up? And it's all about spin control. Two-tiered green here. You can get a lot of balls coming back at you if they don't have uh, take the spin off those pitch shots. Yeah, I think if, if played properly, they'll have a scoring club in their hand. And it, it's a neat opportunity to, to have that birdie, real scorable hole as the 71st hole uh, in the national championship. So it will be fascinating to see just how the, the modern player takes this hole on. The, and will their, will their philosophy change uh, based on the day uh, and the moment. We'll have to see. Now we come to the home hole. 460 Great. yard par four, dogleg to the left. This is where Gil and Jim move the fairway out about 15 yards to the right. We brought the bunkers a little closer to the green. See if they're gonna challenge these bunkers. I think it's a 315 carry over that bunker on the left side. There's a little bit of fescue grass right behind it. So will they play that three wood out to the right or are they gonna take it on with the driver? It absolutely blew my mind when Curtis said in the playoff he hit two iron, two iron to that hole. That, I mean, that just doesn't happen anymore. Uh, but you know, he was a great player and knew how to play U.S. Opens, and sometimes connecting the dots is what, is what you have to do. So it'll be fascinating to see that that fairway is pretty tight, and it turns, and your angle of your, your tee shot will be important. And you know, the bunkering around the green, the, the green is well protected. Uh, We'll see if, uh, if we get some more magic on that uh, on that hole. From a strategy point of view, if they hit it in the rough, they're almost better off laying short of the bunker and pitching from the fairway for control versus trying to carry that force carry up over, which is a little bit of a downslope. That ball can roll to the back of the green. Very tough up and down from over the green there. Well, we'll see what kind of decision they, they choose to make. Yeah. Going to be fun to watch the last three holes. There's a chance we could see a, three birdies in the last three holes, maybe to get a champion <laughs> for the 2022 U.S. Open. Thanks, Jeff. It's always a pleasure to be with you. Likewise. Looking forward to it. Thank you.